In this first game of the DVD on Master and Amateur, we're going to look at a game to whet your appetite for the Jaco Piano. Ready for it, Nick? I'm ready whenever you are. Good. Right, now this first game, before we start, we should probably just explain that the, the white player is a very strong grandmaster, Zavon Andreasium, and he's clearly much higher rated than his opponent. So we have to take that into account. However, the reason I'm going to show you this game is because of the way that white plays it. And it's a really attacking, quite a quick game, and hopefully will make you want to watch the other games in this DVD. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's the plan. So, uh, the moves of the Joko Piano are as follows. Bishop c4 and bishop c5. So, here comes the move c3. This is the key point of the Joko Piano, of course. And there are many different ways that white can play it, but we're just going to concentrate on the first way, Nick, which is to play the idea of d4. This okay. This is the, uh, the first sort of part of this DVD we're going to concentrate on. So, black can't actually stop that, and black played the pawn move pawn to d6 quite a sensible move would you say yeah that looks fairly sensible sort of supporting that pawn uh, uh, yeah opening up lines for the bishop so looks all good to me all right then now we're not really going to concentrate too much on the actual theory as to what black should do and whether that was good or not it's mainly just to kind of explain how the chico piano can be a really dangerous opening so uh, that's the idea of this game basically and white continued with d4 so he said well if you're not going to control the center then i will and black has to do something with the bishop. What do you think, Nick? Should we um, capture or move no, away? I'd, I'd say here. Um, actually, probably both you could do, but I, I kind of want to retreat the bishop, but you could probably capture as well. Well, the problem with bishop b6 is that white can do things like taking on e5. Oh, uh, yeah. And queen takes d8 check. And this is one of those awkward ones where, okay, black knows that we don't really want to take with the king. Oh, hang on, if we take with the king, we might drop the f-pawn. So why don't we take with the knight, and white says, thank you very much, I'll win a pawn. So already you're in pretty, black's in a pretty bad shape. Yeah. Well, I know we promised a lot of attacking chess, Nick, but I should probably just explain that if you can win a pawn along the way like this, it's probably quite a good idea, right? Yeah, I mean, okay. that, that looks like uh, you're in a very good position for white there. So going back to the position after d4, black thought, well, I should probably okay. exchange off. But after c takes d4, by the way, do you think that's the best move? Do you think it's better than knight takes d4? Oh, yeah, I mean, what we, we like, because once you've got those two pawns in the centre, you've got a nice, strong centre. Um, yep, yeah, that's that, always, that always that a good idea. To me. And also, you've still, the black still has to deal with that bishop being attacked, so black's going to have to spend more time, spend another move, try and deal with that bishop. Yep, so we're basically agreeing that c takes is better. Also, what do you think the knight thinks? Well, the knight wants to get out to that uh, c3 square. So yep, it's now been vacated, of course, hasn't it? Sort of best it? square yep. for your knights available. So. so for anybody who doesn't like having a strong centre, probably the Jacopano is not really for you. Um, <laughs> Would anyone not want a strong centre? <laughs> that was part of the joke, yeah. Okay, <laughs> it was so, a joke. <laughs> so black played bishop b4 check. Um, I think bishop b6 is okay. Probably black was a bit concerned that... you know, like Is it six. a bit passive, maybe? Well, it allows white to start doing attacking moves. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying there's any particular good move for white, but moves like, for example, queen b3 could be pretty annoying. Yeah. Now, these are kind of ideas that we're going to be talking about generally in this DVD, Nick, aren't we? Um, you know, when you've got a lead in development, trying to attack early, and that's going to be a feature of this first game. And that pawn on f7, it's, it's one of the sort of weakest pawns in the black camp very early on, isn't it? That's so right, it's kind yeah. of It's only defended by the king itself, so it can easily become a target. And it's not even easy to defend it. Black might have to go queen e7, yeah. but that's not really what we want to do, you know. Um, but we're going to come on to that a little bit later. Okay. So in the game, black played bishop b4 check. Um, many different ways, but white decided to play knight c3. Obviously, it's been defended. But whilst black has gained... Sort of, a, we can say he gained a move, didn't he, by playing check? I still quite like White's position. What do you? Well, you Black's agree? kind of had to move twice to get there, and um, White's way of getting out of check was actually to develop a piece. So, okay, it's pinned right now, but it's still developed. It's out from its original. Exactly. Yeah, square. the knight. The knight is still in the centre. Um, and we have got that that strong double pawn centre as well. We can castle our king. Do we to have? To, yeah. Do we have sensible development on the way? It, like it castling, looks, getting looks the bishop very out. sensible. Yeah, yep. you've got open diagonal for that bishop. For the dark square bishop, um, castle, connect your rooks, everything, everything looks good for white here. Right, now later on we're going to look at black's best move, knight f6. Basically my advice is, um, if you're playing this as black, is if your opponent plays something even a little bit strange or any kind of opening you don't know, mm -hmm. just get your pieces out. Because what the reason why I chose this game, Nick, was the fact that black now played a move like h6. Okay. One of those moves that you know a lot of club players might play to prevent knight g5 or bishop 
G5. It's sort of passively defending that F7 square because it stops the knight coming to G5. But what does it not do? What, what is it, what well, it's, not, it's not developing your pieces. Yeah. It's not fighting for control of the centre. I think that's one of the key words you just mentioned there, Nick. The holiday of not developing. And black is going to be uh, sorely punished, actually, for right. this. Now, of course, white could just simply castle here. But instead, he played queen to B3. Which brings up the attack we, we looked at just a moment ago. Yeah, so we're now sort of doubling down. There's a kind of queen bishop battery down that diagonal. Just what I was going to say, battery, yeah. yeah. Um, not very easy for black to defend it. Now, black decided instead of going queen e7 straight away, which I think is practically the only move even, because right. um, whilst black can do moves like queen f6, do you want to bring your queen out that early? That looks like, I mean, just simple moves. Yeah, it's bl blocking the knight's best square, and it also looks like it could become a target for some of the you know, the pawns and the minor pieces of white as well. Maybe I just want to show, um, after queen f6 castles, maybe something <coughs> like bishop g4, white already has a tactic in this position. And I'm not actually surprised, because um, we've already castled, and you know, black's played a few yeah. loose moves like this, and queen f6... I just, um, I mean, I want to push that e pawn. That's what I want. Well, to pushing do. the e pawn is actually a theme of the game we're going to concentrate on. Right. I mean, in fact, e five here is very strong. Actually, there's something um, potentially even better. Ooh. Um, something to do with the bishop. Okay. Um, maybe push the d pawn to kick away the defender of the bishop. Yep, that's one idea. Nick's trying to play d five. So if the knight moves, then the queen can capture the bishop. Yep. I mean. Probably, probably, I mean, that looks actually quite good. Probably black could try this. Maybe we can even go queen takes b7. There's a lot going on, isn't there? Look, bang, bang, bang. Um, and we said that the Gioco Piano means the quiet game, and there's already some fireworks <laughs> going on on the board. Exactly. So d5 is a good, well, I think if you've, you know, you've probably picked the third best move, and it's still winning. <laughs> Just goes to show the power of the position, right? That's my speciality. Don't go for the top two moves. <laughs> go for the third best move. Your opponent won't be expecting that. Well, after bishop g4, the move I was looking at was knight d5. Ah, okay, because, and of course, that knight's actually not pinned at all, is it? Yeah, so. well, that's the point about castle, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. We, we escaped with the king into safety on g1. The queen Black doesn't can look try, like it's got anywhere great to go. Uh, and we can either win the, the, the rook like this, or if we go back, if you're content to just try and win the bishop, bishop. like this. Um, one thing I was a little bit scared about was the fact that black can do some naughty business down on here. You know, the usual bishop h3. Or we definitely maybe... don't want any naughty business. <laughs> In a chess sense, of course. And bishop takes f3, but actually we have a queen protecting the knight, don't yep. we? So black doesn't even have that on his... On his, uh, in his As armory. an option, yeah. yeah. So uh, going back to the position, I think black saw the problems arising with the bishop on b4, so he took on c3, even check, you know? Yeah. Um, which way should we capture? I think the the obvious way now would be to capture with the pawn on b2. Right, why not with the... I mean, the queen's good, but... What, well, why? it kind of defeats the object of what we did earlier, bringing it out to b3 and attacking that Correct. f7. yep. Um, but what also, if you bring the pawn... If you capture with the pawn, it's now on c3, and it's defending that pawn on uh, d4. D4, strengthening white centre, yep. So, uh, and now black plays queen e7. Again, moves like queen f6 are going to be punished in practically the same way. Yep. Um, basically, we can just say that black shouldn't be playing moves like h6 this early. Right, so queen e7, castles, and black played knight f6. Now, the main thing about the Joko Piano is the understanding, you know, what do I want to do and how am I going to do it. Of course, white can play a move like rook e1. That's a very sensible move, isn't it, Nick? Defending looks, the it looks perfectly sensible. But black is trying to castle. Now, one of the key things about attacking chess even in the opening, even in the middle game, is if, you, if you've got a lead in development, you should try and keep that and continue to attack. So you don't, so want, to give, we... you don't want to give time to black to actually castle these no. things safely? No, I mean, as I said, rookie one castles is absolutely it's, it's fine It's not a bad it. move. No, we can start developing sort of... pieces somewhere. You know, this is all good for us. But do we have something even better in this position? Oh, it's I'm attack, attack. I'm sure we must have. You see, I'm going to go back to what I said just a few moments ago. I want to push that e-pawn. You want to go e5? Yeah. Now, did you do the count? Did you count how many black pieces are well, on that square? Three okay, attackers. Okay, so it looks like there's three attackers and two defenders, but I think there's a sneaky extra defender that you can bring in there. Well, I've got a take. Yeah. Um, if I don't, then the knight was being attacked anyway. Okay. How are we going to develop our initiative now? Well, um, develop gain of time was always a good idea. Gain, so. of ti gain of time. I think... Something, I mean, maybe rookie one is okay here, but again, perhaps that's giving black 
a bit too much time. Well, you might castle. I mean, it's still better for it's white. It's a bit like, like it was before. Yep. Um, so we need to attack. Maybe start, just keep developing and bring the bishop out and attack the queen. So we could bring the bishop out okay. onto a3, attack that queen. And also, what does it stop black doing, even if black manages yeah. to move the queen? What, so what? Um, that's actually going to stop black castling. Yeah, black cannot castle through trick, of course. So when black moves the queen, in fact, there's only one square that stays on f7, which is queen d7. You're blocking I think the, the bishop's yeah. probably saying, excuse blocking me. Blocking the light square bishop. What's going on here? Um, and now, let's continue to develop an attack. So... Uh, there were many good moves for it. Should we play h3? No, we no, we know that h3, well, I mean, it can be a very good move, but again, it seems a bit passive in this position. Right. Like you're, you're talking about attacking, so that's not something we want to do. Maybe... Let's charge in. Okay, well, there you go. Attacking the queen. Oh, excuse me. Attacking the queen. And uh, now we see uh, what happens if... <laughs> the knight doesn't go like that, of course. It goes like that. <laughs> and obviously, black's just going to take it back anyway. What do I need to do now? Um, you're going to have to move the knight, so probably... I still yeah, can't castle. Still this can't is, castle. Do we agree that black's in big problems here? Black, I mean, it seems to be... Uh, black's having to spend more time moving one of its developed pieces. It can't castle king to safety. The bishop is stuck behind the queen, which also means the rook on a8 is stuck as well. So, I mean, effectively, yeah. Um, obviously black's if you playing can't, three pieces. If you can't yeah. castle, then, yeah, you're effectively playing... A handicap game because you've only got two pieces you can play with. <laughs> right, so how are we going to bring in the pieces we haven't used? Obviously, we can see that these pieces are very strong, but how are we going to bring in the other ones? Well, there's there's a nice open file there which uh, one of our rooks could come onto. Yeah, I was going to say the rook A1 one because I mean the the rook on F is sort of doing a little bit of a job anyway. And you can go that. to and you yeah. can go to E1 as well. So there's only one square the queen can move to that protects F7, which was played in the game, and now white uncorked. A lovely idea, a lovely tactic. However, even if you didn't feel that like there was a tactic on the board, don't you feel that White's play has warranted that? The fact mm. that he's brought his pieces out sensibly and Black's king is hopelessly stuck in the centre. And with so yeah, with the Black pieces really, you know, the two rooks are, are virtually useless there. So you must be able to take advantage with some sort of. I'm thinking some sort of sac sacrifice. Sacrifice. Okay, well I play the first move, and the Grandmaster did not. Well, he didn't miss the fact that the Queen could capture. But what can we do now to try and overload the Black King? Because um, we're not going to exchange queens here, especially since we're... Uh... No, that would sort of blunt our attacks. So we need to get rid of the Defender of the Queen. So, so oh, perhaps we could just bring our Rook that we've put onto D1, put it onto D8. Excellent. Check, the King has to take. And, well, Black actually decided to resign here. Right. But after King takes, Queen takes F7. Threat of the other Rook coming yeah. in. Threat of checkmate on E7. Black is hopelessly crushed here. So what can we learn from that, Nick? What do you think? Develop, you get your pieces developed. You know, yep, get, get your pieces developed. And it's all about fast development, everything towards the centre. The centre squares, you know, you hear about this in every single opening, but it's especially so in the Gioco Piano. And you're going to really come across that in mm. practically every game we go through. This and it shows season. just how easy it is once, if you know, to... Um, to actually get an advantage. If black hasn't developed, yeah. you can really yeah. punish them for not developing their exactly. pieces. Exactly. Big theme of the Joko Piano. So there we go. I hope that's whetted your appetite. And uh, if you're interested in looking at the other games, just go on to game two.